pair of meteorologists, a team of filmmakers, traveling across the country in search of never before seen footage inside the eye of the storm. The sojourn begins in New York City as the crew flies to Oxford, Ohio for the first stop of their trip. Over the next several weeks, these climatologists plan to drive from state to state, attending one college basketball game a night until they catch a storm. And here they come onto the floor. While many have witnessed the elusive squall before, the footage they are chasing at the epicenter of the beast would offer an unprecedented look at one of the natural wonders of our universe. But as their scheduled launch time approaches, lead meteorologists Caleb and Roan have yet to arrive at their gate. IMAX filmmaker Buddha Ben and storm blogger Trey are beginning to get worried. I've never missed a flood in Asphalt. Both of them. Like, you would think one would have made it. As the two are about to board their flight, they receive a phone call with devastating news. A crushing blow, and then more bad news. It's Caleb. He's missing the flight too. Buddha Ben dutifully alerts the pilot, but the die has been cast. The journey will begin with a fractured crew. Meanwhile, back at the airport. Finally, after about eight hours in the airport, we're about to get ready to board this thing and get this trip officially started. Caleb, you excited? Spirits are high, most likely from not flying Spirit Airlines. In Ohio, the first wave checks into the Best Western Sycamore, anxiously awaiting their compatriots' arrival. We got crewnecks made for this trip. This is Storm Chasers. Character one, Roan, not here. Character two, Caleb, also not here. Visibly upset and true to his name, Buddha Ben treats himself to a marijuana cigarette to assuage his anxiety. Um, how can you be late for a party if the party's for you? That's kind of how our uh, mindset was today. Today was a microcosm of what this trip's going to be. Uh, chaos. <laughs> it's going to be chaos the entire time. Uh, the storm within, how does that relate to, to the, the storm we're chasing? With the whole team in Oxford, the storm chasers retire to their respective rooms. Rest and nutrition are germane to the success of the chase, as the weather conditions project to be unrelenting. If they are to encounter the storm, these itinerants will need their strength. Big boy waits, boy. Morning in Oxford. Trees rustle as the wind suggests the possibility of a storm tonight. The townsfolk eagerly anticipate. We usually don't have too bad of weather. A few years ago, there was a pretty bad windstorm. In the spring and the summer, like around four o'clock, it bust ass. We had one, what, two miles from my house last year. It just dropped out of the sky, took a building, threw it around, and gone. And they didn't even see that one coming. This place is uh, the worst place I've ever lived. I've lived in like 13 different states, and this is the worst one. It appeared that the elements would be a worthy adversary. The storm chasers needed a vehicle equipped to brave the tempest. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, where's the satellite? What the fuck? The satellite's not on the truck. Roan is right. During the 14-hour drive from New York, the freelance van technician removed the storm tracking equipment to protect the calibration of the gear during the long, windy trek. I thought we had something else over here at the hot pot. We have a satellite and we have two more antennas. He says for long rides that we should take them down. I'm worried about a bag not fitting. Yeah, they're not going to fit. Caleb is right too. With four storm chasers already present and cloud cinematographist Jack Elliott, the team will have to use their field knowledge to install the satellite, tracking, and Doppler radar equipment. With only eight hours until their first potential storm, 
the team scrambles to ensure technological proficiency for their dangerous journey. until the storm's predicted touchdown, the team sits down for what could be their final meal before grappling with Mother Nature. I got steak and eggs. I want to fuel up because the storm can knock you off of your feet sometimes. You need to have four to two. The allure of storm chasers garners much attention, notably a 15-year-old sitting with his parents who asks for a keepsake picture. <laughs> Wait, when is when is the swimming? At the break center. Today? Yeah, today. The chasers see an opportunity to pursue a water-based storm. A typhoon could be the perfect segue to an on-court storm. But before they could even solidify their plans, there was a fly in the ointment. Well, we can't go to the swimming today. I was just in the bathroom. And it's a single stall bathroom. And I was positive I locked the door. But then this 15-year-old kid was telling me just walking on the As they weigh the prospective benefits of a pool storm against the potential of getting made fun of by an unruly band of high school swimmers, the crew stops by an on-campus fraternity in hopes of recruiting fellow chasers. Do you guys think a storm is going to happen tonight or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to be cloudy. Absolutely. No shot. Absolutely. It's cloudy. Oh, no. <laughs> we have a basketball I mean, team. I have to <laughs> Torn apart by a 15 and 13 record towards the season's close, a tournament berth was unlikely for the Red Hawks. In attempts to invigorate the disenfranchised, the Storm Chasers stamp their logo on the tarp wrapping of their fraternity basement and throw a pickup basketball game against the underprivileged frat bros. But will this be enough? This is Miami, Ohio, and we're storming the court tonight, boys! <laughs> the school spirit has been restored. The chasers are on to the game. But first, one more stop. The moisture in the air suggests an atmosphere ripe for the storm and Roan has an opportunity to rid himself of the bad juju from his shitty bathroom situation. Hey, man, you talking about, uh, about how long the door is. <laughs> cool. Good juju restored, they turn their focus towards the race. The chasers align themselves with the swimmer in lane six and ready themselves mentally for what could be their first storm. So now we actually have to go and try and storm the court. We can't go home within three hours of the trip starting. But no one expected that. We're just trying to get our sea legs beneath us. Like I will be surprised if we don't go home tomorrow. Bitch. Crestfallen by the loss, the storm chasers recalibrate their focus towards the night's main event. If they want to be taken seriously, the chasers will have to dress for the occasion. Perfect. Coming to Brick Street tonight. How about you? They win. Also, if there's a basketball game, we're in that ass. What's that? We'll even be here if you guys win. Yeah. If uh, you guys lose, we're out. They're right. storm chasing. So if they storm the court tonight, we're we're running to Brick Street and we'll fucking we'll take you up on that offer. All right. We'll be the guys in uh, yellow. With 10 minutes till tip off, the team arrives at Millet Hall. They are eager to start their journey and acutely vigilant for any storm. Let's do it! 
Let's go! Go Jason, baby! Let's get it, bro! Let's go, Let's go, Let's go, Let's go. Let's go. The Red Hawk faithful are emboldened by the sight of the chasers. With their presence, hope springs anew. Standing in the way of tonight's storm are the Buffalo Bulls, who are ranked 21st in the country and have only lost three times. A stiff foe for some hungry chasers. The Miami Red Hawks are off to a hot start, and they'll need it after a tactical error led them to give up an 18 to nothing lead in the opening minutes of the game. Confident from their first basket, Miami's success snowballs. The stadium rocks with excitement. <laughs> With the game nearly in balance as the half approaches, the braggadocio reaches a fevered pitch. We want Bama! The home team is down only three with two minutes left in the game, and the stadium security senses the skies darkening. From down 18 nothing, could you believe it? They prepare accordingly for the storm. With every element in place, it all comes down to one last shot. The crew drives into the night, feeling dejected after missing their chance to document the eye of the storm. But there is little time to grouse. Tomorrow, the unranked Indiana Hoosiers host number four Michigan State Spartans, 120 miles southwest in Bloomington, Indiana. Will these amigos lasso a tornado, or will they again fall short? The storm chasers rush through the morning mist to their Doppler certified storm tank, scurrying to make the 12 p.m. tip off. The van jack! Get in the van, get in the van! Shut the door! Shut the door! Come on! Go, 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 man! Get in, get in! Close the door! Holy shit! Go, 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 go! Wait, wait, wait! The truck is open! Wait, get up, get up! Their weather band radio and atlases have fallen causing chaos. Close the truck, close the truck. Uh, it's, it's futuristic. Does it go on a tone? No, no, you gotta slam it. All right, now go. All right, now go, 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 Still 45 minutes out, they make one last stop, fortifying their brains with caffeine in preparation for the storm. After caffeinating, the band makes their way to a storm chaser's safe house, a hideout used by chasers of yore. But as time passes, Caleb's dedication to storm chasing is beginning to show. In this case, he has internalized the storm as his cup of coffee accelerates his digestive processes towards unprecedented tumult. He needs to shit. I, I have to take a dog. Good morning, my friend. After a short introduction, the team makes their way into the safe house. Caleb wastes no time and makes time for his waste. Yeah, I'll show you how I use. Yeah, my roommate's showering. Go in that room. Yeah? And then there's a bathroom in that room. Okay. Hey, uh, I'll be back really quick. The rest of the chasers attempt to buy time for Caleb with small talk. Even crimson. Even it's really not cream and crimson anymore. <laughs> they change the color? I mean, like, they say it is, it's but all their shit <laughs> is just like red and white, yeah. Way to say it. Eventually, the safe house hotelier grows anxious about the synchronous storm happening in his own bathroom. Caleb, take the shit. <laughs> oh, he's a lot. He's a lot. He's super hydrated. Taking a lot of 
He's one of the more hydrated of our, of our five. Finally, Storm Chaser Caleb emerges, freshly emptied and light enough to charge into a storm. Oh man, that was quick, huh? With only 30 minutes till tip off, the crew piles into their guide's SUV and speeds towards Simon Scott Assembly Hall. Whoa. On their way, tipsters alert the chasers that the likelihood of a storm on this day is historically low. Someone just said, there's less than a 0% chance that they're gonna storm the court if they win. With five national championships and eight Final Four appearances, IU boasts a proud basketball tradition. Their last storm was after beating Kentucky at the buzzer in 2011, over eight years ago. Will a victory against Michigan State as only a six-point underdog be enough to end an octatic drought? Man, shut up! At seven minutes to tip off, the chasers bundle out of the SUV and power walk some 400 yards through uncharted terrain to the arena. Dude, hold on. <laughs> I'm just laughing because <laughs> I'm laughing because I think that we're not going to storm the court. I think we're not gonna die. <laughs> the crew presses on, bolstered by the confidence of Hoosier fans who also predict precipitation. You think we're about to storm? I think so. Perfect. Oh, there's a storm of brewing. You see it? <laughs> With morale high and the nation watching, the storm chasers were about to face their biggest test yet. Simon Scott Assembly Hall is a 17,000-seat arena and is recognized by sports broadcaster Gus Johnson as the Carnegie Hall of Basketball. Their student section, known as the Crimson Guard, holds over 8,000 students creating one of the loudest atmospheres in the sport. <laughs> Access to the student section is key to the wrangling of the storm. As these storm chasers are storm chasers and not students, gaining entry would prove to be an obstacle. Perched high atop the arena, the crew watchfully eyes more riotous sections. I want to skin in this game. I'm eyeing those seats over there. After careful examination of the building's egress, the storm chasers find a stumbling block in their path to the eye. As they try to navigate around this newfound impediment, Michigan State marches to a commanding lead. Eager to shuffle the energy and re-harness the storm, they make their way through the tunnel to reevaluate. We're down, we're not out. We're in the right position to work ourselves into a storm. It's a twister. I hear it. I hear the sirens. It's coming. With a plan to breach the student section, the storm chasers appear re-energized and ready to take on the second half. Unfortunately, the storm chasers are dismayed to learn that access is restricted only to those lucky enough to be sporting a gold bracelet. It was an earth-shattering blow to the team, who knew that their only access to their moment of glory was through the student section. If they were going to storm, it had to be there. We have the intel leading, hello. Oh my God. In a stroke of good fortune, a storm-chasing ally stowed away among the stadium staff approaches the crew. In exchange for some light-hearted banter, the chasers obtain the vaunted student section access they desperately need. With new seats and a newfound hope, the chasers begin to push towards a comeback. Yeah! It seems to be working. As the chances of a storm begin to increase, the chasers push forward. Yeah! Suddenly, tragedy strikes. In a crisis of masculinity, a power-drunk security guard forcibly removes the chasers. The crowd recognizes the miscarriage of justice and rains down boos in disapproval. Atop the staircase, the storm chasers must plead their case or risk banishment from the student section permanently. They told us that we're good to be in here. Go, this guy can't stop us. They're, they're allowed to be back here. Let's go, back. 
We're back, we're to go! When cool air rises, water vapor condenses and forms cumulus clouds. As the heat rises, thunder is released and drops of rain fall to the earth. Oh, the frantic action of the chasers was actually helping in a way they'd never imagined. They were creating a storm. But before the storm can make landfall, more obstacles lie in wait. Stadium security multiplies in number, and the Spartans have one last attempt to thwart the upset. Eight seconds left. We gotta stop right here. We're storming the right away. We're right there. One stop for one stop. With every element in place, it all comes down to one last shot. The storm, the chasers race towards the court, braving the environment with no regard for their own safety. The chasers eye the eye of the storm, eagerly anticipating the elusive shot they've craved this entire time. did it, the perfect shot. They hadn't just chased a storm, they'd created one. This is how you die a fucking legend. You don't live a legend, you die a fucking legend. This week, the chasers found more than a storm. They found a legacy in small towns where underdog programs would be happy to simply cover the spread. Suddenly, there was hope. Hope for a brighter day. Hope for a future. Hope for enough storms to whip these programs into national title contenders. And for that, they will be remembered by a fan base, nay, a nation, as legends.